So today, um, in this video, I'm just going to show you how I go about assembling the, the slide mount, the TI slider, and uh, talk a little bit about the uh, design and each individual component. So you've got an idea how. So you've got an idea how we put it all together and uh, and how it's been been designed. All right. So basically, let's just start. Okay. So first of all, we've got our rear channel. And I'm going to turn the camera down so you can see what I'm doing to put it all together. And I'll try and talk about it as we go along. Here's the rear channel. Uh, all 2.5 millimeter stainless steel, marine grade. And um, once I've welded this up, it's then electro polished, which is the uh, superior finish to stainless steel to stop it from um, tea staining, rusting, and so on. So once we've got that, these are 250 millimeters long. 250 millimeters here, and this channel is approximately 90, mil 90 millimeters wide. So, this is what I call the carriageway. Uh, it's got the TI light, TI Teak Integrity logo on the front there. And this is the uh, ABS plastic uh, insert that goes inside the, the carriageway. So, we Capture, got to capture the ABS, so that's captured by one side with the bolt, and then this other bolt will stop it from coming out the other side, along with something else later. So, okay, so that's that that's captured in there. Uh, again, this is all three millimeter. This is three millimeter, so this is up up a little bit in, in its thickness because uh, we have to weld these these arms on it. Okay, so there's a carriageway that simply fits onto the slider there, and it runs in that plastic. But first, we'll put the mounting brackets on. So here's the mounting brackets, they're pretty straightforward, just angle with a slot, so you've got plenty of adjustment up and down. I tried to make these so that there's so much adjustment in where you can position it. So you've got all these holes along the side that can adjust the slider anywhere along where you need to, just in case there's something in the way or whatever. So you've got plenty of adjustment up and down. So let's go and bolt that together. I always use uh, anti-seize on my nylon bolts because uh, when you're when you're doing up nylon nylon nuts, sorry, um, they can see. So always use some sort of uh, lubricant on your nylon nuts and bolts with um, not bolts but nuts with uh, stainless steel because it heats up, expands, and then welds shut. So those of you who have done that before will know what I'm talking about. I'll be assembling all this for you, so you hopefully don't have to change it, but at least you can if you want to. B wants to be a part of what I'm doing. Okay, so they're all super tight, and you can see now how, how, how it gets fixed to the transom. Are these plates here, and again, you can lift that up or down according to where, it, where you need to go. And you've got these slots on the back, so you get a bit of adjustment there. You've got heaps of adjustment everywhere, so you shouldn't have a problem. So that's that back section. Now we've got the little self-aligning stopper that we put in at the bottom. Pretty, pretty straightforward. So that's our little dome nut. And then we've got a little locking nut at the bottom. That's just a little bit of adjustment there in case you need to, just a couple of millimetres either way. And you get what I mean when I put it all together. There we go. So there's our carriage. It goes on the guide. It's a bit stiff when it goes on, but it's nice when once it gets on there. And there we got our carriage. This, this is going to be to suit one kilowatt transducers. If you notice down the bottom here, that, that, in, inside that, there's a little dome cavity, and then there's the dome nut. So that basically, once that's out and goes down to the bottom, there's no vibration occurring because that little dome nut has gone into the dome cavity and takes away all vibration, self-centers it, self it and makes it pretty rock solid. Eye bolt, and that's been um, ceramic coated. The thread, is, the thread is ceramic coated, so that thread's gonna last a little bit longer and it won't gall as much galling and sticking to the stainless thread that's in, inside there. It is for the anti-galling properties that it contains when it's going into the nut, threading in, so it lasts longer. 
So when, when I tighten up this bolt here, it goes into these, 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 these holes here. You've got 13 millimeter increments. So when it goes into them, as, as I can see now, it's just off one of the holes in there. So that's why I've got this. So what I do is I just, that's why I've got this adjustment in this. So I've got to lift that up just a tiny little bit. So I lift that up a little bit. Assuming it's five millimeters approximately and tighten the locking up again. Slide it down and let B. Oh, that bee's hanging around. Uh, so yeah, so now it's locked in. Uh, you can adjust that self-centering bolt there. It doesn't have to go in those holes, but those holes just give it that little bit of lock. So you can sit on the steel, doesn't matter. And you can lock that up whatever height you want to. But mainly you're going to be doing it right down the bottom, lock it up. That's going to hold the transducer stiff. When you're traveling, you want to tuck it up, lift it up. I've, there's a bolt that's welded here, so that way you can you can lock it into the bolt when you're traveling. Now you know that's not that's not coming out now. So you can go for gravel roads or whatever, and that carriage weight is not dropping on you. It's going to be locked into there. And I've got a plastic um, lock nut on here, which just gives it that little bit of extra protection. Okay, so now we're going to install the transducer. Um, footprint plate which is this one here is to suit the one kilowatt MR transducer so here's the space so again I get that ceramic coated stainless steel oh, no. so you'll set your angle whatever that angle is on your boat uh, yeah so you'll set that whatever you want you got spray plate tabs on here if you want to add a spray plate later but that's up to you because you've got a profile all around these uh, arms and that and you've got to make sure it slides up and down so that's really on the onus is on you to do that um, so unless you take it into a boat shop or someone who knows what they're doing uh, to do that for you but at least you've got these tabs here so you can bolt the plate too otherwise there's nowhere to put a spray plate at all if you need one the good thing about this uh this footprint plate as well is it see how it's curved at the back see the original is square so once when, when that's in the water that is just going to be, the only thing that's going to be smashing through the water is these three millimeter arms, maybe that cylindrical packer there, uh, sorry, that spacer, and the transducer. There's no, there's no square section for water to hit and smash and create turbulence. The transducer itself will may cause turbulence, but at least the mount isn't going to do that. But yes, they're possibly a little bit from the, maybe the, the bolts if you set it down real deep, but generally these transducers are quite thick and so they're gonna be sitting pretty deep in the water anyway. You generally probably won't have that bolt in the water, but if you did, that's all that's gonna be causing turbulence. So it's really just the transducer sliding through the water. And you haven't got any square sections that you do with some other mounts. You've got this square section coming out here that's gonna smash water, reflect, and then create turbulence. Cable tie ring there as well. So there it is, there's the slider. That's to suit the one kilowatt MR transducers. And these, all we do, we do any, most of the popular transducers by just adjusting these arms here. So those arms are then wider or thinner, depending on what other transducer it fits. We do mainly the popular ones. There's a couple we don't do, they're just too hard to make them fit this sort of system. We also recommend always, if it's an aluminium boat, recommend putting this on a flat surface and having a barrier between the stainless steel and the aluminium. Don't have, do not have full contact with the both. So the best way to do that, I found, is just simply the day before you install it, you coat this with silicon, this area here, let it dry. So that way, the day that you go to install it, you've got this barrier already there. And I suppose the best thing you could do is uh, install it as you wish, drill all your holes, make sure it all fits, take it off, silic do that layer of silicon there, nice, neat layer of silicon. Let it dry, the next day come along, bolt it all back up. You don't have to get your tools out again, except your, your spanners. And you've got that nice barrier, that thin barrier there. Because what tends to happen is uh, some people send me photos back of their job and they've got silicon everywhere. And it just, I mean, you know, it just doesn't, uh, on a product such as this, you, know, you just want it to look as best as it can. And there's silicon hanging out everywhere. And I mean, that might not matter to you, but, um, you know, it's, you might, it might matter to you. Also, 
prefer and recommend two four bolts of holding this, not just two. This is quite a heavy unit, so plus your transducer and so on. So, you know, it's quite a heavy unit. So we want to make sure you've got enough bolts in that that's holding that to the transom and that your transom is strong enough to hold it. Check your welds if you've got a transom plate, make sure they're not tiny little crappy welds. You want to make sure they're nice and strong. And if you have to, it's not going to cost a lot to get some fabricated locally to you to put a new plate on for you and make sure it's it's good. That's really quite a, it's an hour job to do. So no one's going to be charging a fortune if you're doing that. And if you're going to be spending money on this, well then you might as well spend that a little bit more and get the transom plate looked at, looked at rather than just folding it to any old transom plate that's been on there for 30 years. Anyway, there you go. I hope that uh, gives you some insight into how this is assembled, some of the materials I've used and why it's been designed the way it has. Uh, thanks for watching the video and uh, message us if you need any more info.